It's called uh, Linda Goes to Mars. I just found out yesterday that Linda goes to Mars. Every time I sit and look at pictures of used cars. When you were at the Earl of Old Town, you'd uh, sometimes go out and um, in search of comedy. I guess after the we show. We had to go far. Where'd you have to go? Directly across the street was Second City. And uh, Goodman and I were lucky enough to see some early stuff over there. You know. Early stuff by who? Um, by Belushi, John Belushi, the stranger here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, man, I don't know who else was in that class. I mean, it was really good. Do you remember, Bill, who was around then? Well, uh, Harold Ramis, um, my brother Brian Doyle Murray, um, John Belushi. Um, uh, it, it's real foggy. Honestly, <laughs> it was a it was a hard, difficult time for me. But these guys were across the street all the time, and I used to. Th I had never had a job where I had. I never held a job as long as I held that job. You know, that was very exciting for me. There was one show that we that ran for seven months, and I remember walking into work and saying, "My God, that guy John Prine's still working." He's a because <laughs> they they would put your your name in the front window. His name would be in the window. Whoever was playing. And uh, we worked the same sort of hours, so you just think, I wonder what's going on over there. Sometimes when you guys would go late, we'd get to stumble in there and you'd be playing a little bit longer and you'd see them after they had manipulated the crowd completely. And there were, there were men that were crying and smoking and drinking and then there were women that were just adoring. And you'd go, eh, musicians. <laughs> 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 they worked their their ways on people, yeah. But that was um, that was a great period in Chicago. Really nice period in Chicago. How did you learn to be on stage? And I didn't. <laughs> I got up on stage, and <laughs> normally I was kind of a shy person. And as soon as that one light hit me, I just talked my ass off. I just <laughs> so I just told stories, and you know, off the top of my head. And, Mainly, I was I found out I told stories because I, I was nervous about my singing and playing. You know, I didn't think it was up to par at all. And also, I could not tune a guitar. And so I'd stand on stage going. I didn't do that for, I'm, talk, I'm talking sometimes 15 minutes. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to come up with something, you know. <laughs> I, Leo Kaki opened for me once, right? This is early on. And everything Leo plays, even when he tunes, it sounds like a song. Yeah. You know? And then I came out, <laughs> and I'm doing that for, but in between every song. I didn't think to, I couldn't afford a guitar tag. <laughs> They're expensive. <laughs> Bill, did you take naturally to the stage, or was it something you had to, to study at and work up to? Uh, I... Uh... I remember the first time I went to an improvisation class at Second City, uh, I, uh, I was so bad that I walked out on the street and just kept walking. And I walked for hours until it got dark and I, I'd really walked the wrong direction. I mean, I'm a, I'm a cake eater from the north side. and I ended up like 63rd and Loomis, and where I should not have been probably. Uh, I was so despondent about how bad I was that I didn't go back to it for a long time. Uh, I s instead decided to go uh, hitchhike around and, and when I returned I had stories and I could tell stories and all of a sudden I could do it. I don't know how it happened but until you can tell a story you can't act or probably play music either. So I had to go out and, and live some and, uh, and have something to say in order to be able to uh, stand in my own shoes, feel confident enough to uh, tell anybody anything. Through what I consider to be one of the all-time greatest acts of friendship that I've ever heard about in the music industry, yeah. Stevie Goodman was opening multiple nights for Chris Christopherson, who was taking off, and uh, the hottest new thing. And Christopherson, because he's a sweet guy and, and because he recognized talent, you know, kept saying, "Oh, Stevie, you're great. I, you know, you're fantastic." 
And Goodman kept saying to him, well, you think I'm good. You've got to hear my friend. Finally, at the last night of the stint, Goodman gets Christofferson to come down to see you at the Earl, right? Uh, yeah. With, with Paul Anka. And Samantha Eggers. And Samantha Eggers, <laughs> who was not as happy to be there, as, yeah. as the story goes. But um, you were done with your set. You had to pull the, the chairs, seat, off, chairs the off the tables. Yeah. And in this empty club, you got Chris Christopherson looking at you like, yeah, show me something. There was nobody at the time I would have rather sang my songs for than Chris. And between him and Steve Goodman, probably the most two unselfish people I ever met, let alone, let alone people in like music or show business, you know. I mean, both of them were Goodman. It was his big shining moment. Chris and his band were all telling Steve how much they thought of his songs and he ought to go to Nashville and make a record. And Goodman's going, no, you need to go across town and hear my buddy at, at one in the morning on a Sunday. And he dragged him over there and Chris, after I sang my songs, Chris asked me to get back up on stage again and sing those same songs and anything else I had. You know, so it was a big moment. But like I say, at the time, I was a happy, I was a happy cat, you know. <laughs> uh, and Christopher, through Christopherson, you, you soon got a record deal, and, and, uh, and it's... Uh... Goodman and I went to New York City. Goodman had been there before. I'd never been to New York. I got off the plane at 7.30 at night and picked up a village voice at LaGuardia. And here, we didn't know Chris was in town, but Chris was playing the village. We went straight down. We got in a cab with our guitars and our suitcase and got off right in front of the bitter end. And here's Chris and Donnie Fritz and Billy Swan. They're all walking back over for the second show. And Chris looks at us and he says, he says, you guys are going to get up and sing three songs apiece. And the whole room was packed with uh, record executives. And Jerry Wexler came up to me uh, after I sang my three songs and asked me if I'd come over to Atlantic the next morning at 10 a.m. And I did, and he had a record contract waiting on the desk for me. I hadn't been in New York 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as good, a, as great a city as Chicago is for music, nobody got signed at that time. No, nobody could get a record contract without leaving town. <laughs> Me and Goodman left town for three days and came back with record contracts. They, we were like returning astronauts. They were almost too great. <laughs> it was really kind of goofy. And I didn't know at the time that that was not the way. <laughs> I wondered why uh, for years my, my peers treated me so like uh, kind of kept a distance from me, <laughs> you know, it's because I had, there was this like Cinderella kid, you know. Yeah. yeah, if you weren't the most lovable man in America, you'd be pretty easy to hate um, over things like that. <laughs> uh, but that was an incredible, I mean, to me, it's such an incredible thing. Most of us, if, if Chris Christopherson said, hey, you're fantastic, I, you know, you're, you're going to go somewhere and I'm going to help you, we would say, thank you very much. That was May I have another? And, uh, and instead he said, you got to hear it. John. For if there's life out there somewhere beyond this life on earth, then Linda must have gone out there and got her money's worth. <laughs> and oh my stars, my Linda's gone to Mars. Well, I wish she wouldn't leave me here alone. And oh my stars, my Linda's gone to Mars. Well, I wonder where she bring me something home. Yeah, I wonder where she bring me something home. Maybe an earnest up flash water. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is B.O.B. This is G-Eazy. I'm Mo. This is Julia Michaels. This is Logic. Make sure you subscribe to the Recording Academy channel. Flex.